I feel like I'm doing one of those TED Talks with the uh, microphone here. This is nice. Um, obviously, really excited to be here. Um, I've been coming to these Nike clinics for a bunch of years now and, and getting the opportunity to speak and share some thoughts and some ideas you know, with a great group of coaches. Uh, it's obviously an honor um, for me. Um, you know, uh, it's also great to be back in the Northwest. I, uh, I grew up in Walla Walla just down the road and, and uh, you know, you said, like he said, this is my second season in Oregon State. This is really the first time uh, in my coaching career that I've worked in the Northwest. Um, so just, just getting the opportunity for my family, really appreciative to Coach Smith um, for that opportunity to come back here. Uh, I met a number of guys in this room I recognize just walking up here uh, through recruiting just in the last year. Uh, and we'll be, uh, our staff will be out, you know, in, in April, May again, uh, hitting, hitting the state of Oregon. That, that's a big deal for us and um, really proud to say that we got, uh, we got 14 uh, freshmen that'll be joining uh, from the state of Oregon that'll be joining our roster this summer. So that's something, again, that's really important to our staff uh, and we hope to build on that in, in, uh, in the future. Uh, spring football, uh, we've got, we start spring ball on Tuesday. Um, and so at the end of my talk, I'll post up some of the dates, but we'd love to have you guys. You guys are more than welcome to come down there uh, and check it out. Uh, I, I, really like, uh, I really like the direction that we're, that we're headed um, down there. And, and uh, you know, I think we've got some work to do, but, uh, you know, I, I, I do. I think we've got a heck of a staff, man. I, I tell Jonathan all that uh, all the time. One of the best staffs I feel like that I've worked on um, as far as, like, great teachers, good guys to be around, and I feel like I've learned a tremendous amount from a bunch of the guys on my staff. Um, but today, uh, I'm gonna talk, and I have to apologize a little bit because I didn't realize I was the only show here. Um, you know, so I, I would have given a little bit more broad talk. The, uh, the line guys are probably, you know, O-line, D-line coaches are probably loving it because they got a chance probably just to say, hey, he's talking about quarterback stuff. I'm gonna go, go to the bar. Um, but uh, this is going to be kind of, you know, how we, um, some of the things that we do to develop the QB uh, from the off season to how we kind of go about teaching some of our pass game uh, to, and then later in the, in the, in the talk, I'll, I will get into some of, you know, some on the field stuff with some of our drill work. Um, so uh, what I want to talk about is, and we talk about this as a staff a lot, creating a winning edge. So right now it's like everybody, every, every program in the country is going through Spring football, they all get 15 practices. You know, they're all in the weight room with the strength coaches right now, you know, preparing for that. We're all gonna be installing our offense. We're all gonna be meeting with the, you know, our quarterbacks or our position groups. We're all gonna be doing that stuff. Is how can we, um, how can we create an edge, right? How can we give ourselves, uh, what can we do within that um, to, to, to gain an advantage over our competition? And this is kind of a philosophy that, that, that uh, you know, I bought into for a long time and, and I, I feel like it's, you know, it's really at work at, at Oregon State with what Coach Smith is doing, um, is doing the common things in an uncommon way over time. And those are those little, the, those little tasks that don't seem like a lot, like a position meeting, right? Like maybe a drill, but whatever you're doing is doing those things in an uncommon way, being very efficient with the way that we, uh, we maximize, I guess, every opportunity. And we talk about with our players like stacking those over and over and over, and we stack those things over and over, uh, over time, we're gonna get the results that we want. So it's a definite process, and we feel like we're right in the middle of it. Um, but this is something that, you know, like this philosophy I think is, is huge, and that's the approach that we've taken. Uh, and, and I'm gonna talk about it kind of how it applies really in the meeting room, you know, and in in away from the field, and then get, get to it here on, on practice and drills here. Uh, so I first off, I want to start, start off with fundamentals of a, great, of a great position meeting, right, or a great meeting in general. And, and the number one thing, I, this is a pretty big room, hopefully you guys can see that back there. Um, the number one thing I think with your meeting is you've got to be organized, right? And uh, I, I think it's important to list, you know, list the things that you're going to cover. When those, so those quarterbacks come into the room, you know, they can, I think that's really important to the flow of the meeting. Like, hey, we're, we're going to go through... We're going to hit. Uh, we're going to talk about our run game stuff here. We're going to get into some protection. We're going to cover these pass concepts specifically. Maybe these blitz adjustments. You know, um, then we're going to get into some signals. We're going to cover. Uh, you know, go through the practice plan, and then you're out of here. But those guys can kind of see. Okay, this is the stuff. 
He's thought about it. It's organized on the board. They can all see it. Uh, the film is ready. Okay, and this is a big one of mine that I try to talk to. You know, when I was a younger coach, made this mistake. I'd get into the position meeting, you know, and then I'd be like, all right, let's pull up the, you know, this cut up right here, and it would take a while for it to pull up, and then you maybe couldn't, oh, I'm going to find you this clip I saw this morning when I was watching it. I like to, to think that that film is ready to roll, okay? And you've, you've gone through and you've got that cut up ironed out, whatever teaching clip um, that you want to see, because we only get so much time with these guys, is I've got the film ready to roll. This is a clip I want to show them. Um, that's really going to get across the idea that I'm, that I'm trying to convey. Uh, and we talked about the flow, and I do think it's important after 20 minutes, you know, these guys sit in there, you know, and I, I put on here, you like to hear yourself, uh, Coach Smith tells us as position coaches this all the time, you like to hear yourself talk a lot more than they do, right? So uh, after 20 minutes, we try to break it up, you know, stop for a second, you know, you lighten the mood, tell a joke, show a video, and I'll talk about some of the things that I do to break it up. But I do think that that's important because you want those guys to, to, to want to be there and enjoy it. And I feel like those kids, you just up there talking and talking in the film and the film, and it's really easy to do because you're running the remote. I, I do feel like they can kind of get lost in that. So I think after a little point, it's important to take a break. Energized, okay? Uh, that you're passionate about your message, okay? So if you're installing a play or a concept, those guys are really, I mean, you're coming across like, man, this is it, man. I got a secret, and I'm selling it to them, right? This is it. I got the answers to the test for you, right? Um, this concept that we're in selling, this is how it's, you're going to be successful on Saturday or on Friday night, right? This is, these are some great clips right here. Look at this. You hit this thing, make this read, make this throw, right? You got yourself a touchdown. That's, that's what those guys want to hear, but you're really passionate about what you're selling, um, we do. I, I play music in, in just about every one of my position meetings, and and I do I do think with uh, our guys love it. If I, if I don't if I don't have music in there, those guys I, I just I feel like again for the flow of the meeting and those guys enjoying like being there. It's not very loud. It's not overwhelming. What I'm trying to say, um, and I usually you know I'm going with some classic rock or some country, you know, and then I'll throw a bone to those guys the, the QBs if a hey, if it's fall camp and. We didn't have any turnovers in the previous practice or, or um, you know, it, we go through like, hey, we didn't, we didn't turn it over last game during the season. I'll let you guys pick it out, right? And then they'll pick it out whatever they want to pick out, um, you know, which I'll take and I'll listen to if we didn't turn the ball over in the previous game. That's a heck of a deal. Um, and uh, humor. So I'll, we'll throw in, um, I just think keeping it light. Keeping it light in there, and, and you're talking, and you're getting stuff done, but there's a light mood where you're free and you're joking with those guys, um, where they really genuinely enjoy being in that meeting. Um, you know, I'll show some clips, short, brief clips of movies to break it up. I talked about breaking the meeting up. Like, none of these guys have seen any of these good movies, you know, like a Dumb and Dumber, Kingpin, you know, Big Lebowski, Major League, some, you know. So they've never seen any of these clips before, and so you can show them some clips from some of those movies, I think it just breaks it up, it creates some conversation, and then we're right back into ball. Um, this is something that I've really taken from, from Jonathan, and, and like I said earlier, I've learned uh, so much from him, you know, being a quarterback guy, but this is, this is a big thing that I feel like really hits home with our players, is the NFL film, uh, and, and NCAA, the, the NFL film, it's like, hey, we're, we're talking, we're talking about uh, maybe a drill that I'm doing, you know, and I'm showing some clips of, uh, you know, us installing the drill or, or talking about it maybe on a clip that we're watching from spring football. And, uh, okay, here's a clip of Jared Goff or Aaron Rodgers moving in the pocket. Look how this guy, look at the base that he's playing with. Look how he slides in the pocket, keeps his eyes downfield, makes that throw. And I think the guy's like, you know, or, or he's going to take a hit. Look at this guy standing there. He knows he's going to take the hit. He stands in there. He delivers. The, the pass on, on, I just think showing those guys clips of quarterbacks that are doing it the right way at a big time level that they can relate to, um, I think is a good change up. And then the NCA TV copy, and you can find a bunch of this stuff online, you know, uh, YouTube, you know. A lot of it is like, look at this quarterback making this mistake, you know, and you're watching it, and you can catch the TV cop commentary with a commentator. You know, maybe it's a guy taking a sack in the two minute drill. Right? Or I, I, like, I love to show my guys a lot of like, hey, look at this guy. It's the first play of the game and he takes a delay game. Right? And the shot clock runs out on him. You know? And the, the commentators are like, oh, it's a freshman mistake. You know? He'll learn. You know? And it's like, we can't make these mistakes. So I try to show these guys 
you know, some, some examples every now and then of like guys, you know, college and the pros sometimes making some of these mistakes um, so that they can learn from them. And, and a lot of that is situational. Uh, simplified, and this is a big thing, okay? So I feel like, you know, our job as teachers and coaches is to take the information or the concept that we're trying to teach and simplify it for those guys, you know? And really think about it before you get in that meeting. This is, this is how I'm, I, I, I'm trying to talk with our position coaches all the time. This is how I'm thinking about teaching this. You know, I want to make sure that this really, I've really simplified what I'm, the concept that I'm trying to teach so that those guys can grasp it easily. Um, you know, uh, and then information as direct care over to practice. I do, I do think that's, I do think that's big. You're not covering a bunch of stuff that like, oh, we're going to get to this Friday. You know, or, or from, you don't need to know this for today's practice, but you need to go. And I, I think that's important just to cover the stuff that, hey, I'm going to hit this. This is what you need to know for today. Um, but again, this thing, and, and I'm going to show you here with a couple, hey, this, these are a couple just past concepts that we, you know, some plays that we, we install and how we kind of go through them. But you've, been, you've taken the complexity out of it for them. I think some guys get in there and they're trying to kind of figure out how they're going to teach it as they're teaching it. You've thought about it. Um, we like to say clear, concise, and repetitive. Right? So you're very clear in your mess message. It's a very concise, short coaching points that they can, they can hit on. And then you're constantly repeating that uh, over and over. And then, and then we're really big on these buzzwords. So you'll hear me say a lot of these as we go through these clips. But buzzwords that the quarterbacks, they know. They know exactly what I mean when I say that buzzword, base, or target, where I'm not having to, because on the field, you don't really ha always have a lot of time, particularly during team reps. You know, everybody kind of playing fast now. You've got to just, hey, you've got to give them a, a buzzword that they can relate to and know what you're talking about. Um, so simplifying the pass game. Okay, and I'm going to give you a couple of, uh, of examples of a couple of different types of, you know, basically, I guess, reads or the way that we teach a couple of these plays. Uh, these, these are the three that I'll cover here. Uh, so the first one's yes or no, and this is really simple, right? So this is a Nebraska concept for us. Um, which is basically just outs, five yard outs on the, you know, on the outside here. Uh, we're running an inside zone scheme, okay? And this is just a simple RPO. And we'll do this out of a bunch of different looks. Um, he doesn't have to know what the box is, you know? Uh, he doesn't have to know, you know, how many guys are in the box or whatnot. He's got to know, do I like my out out here? Do I like this? Can I make this throw and throw a completion? I'm going to take it. Yes or no? Pre-snap. Do I like it? I'm going to take it. If not, I'm going to work the run game. Okay? And, and we don't build all our RPOs like this, but a lot of them are very simple like this to where I do think you guys can simplify it for them. Well, that, that's kind of the way that we do it. Do you like it? Take it. If not, work the handoff. Okay? So this is like an inside zone with an out. I would have preferred that he probably took it down here because there's, I feel like there's a little bit cleaner throwing lane. There's kind of an overhang backer over here. Uh, Jake liked to say, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm faking there, my eyes are there, I can feel this guy post-snap, you know, this, this, uh, this outside backer, and he makes a throw there. But it's just a yes-no deal. Okay, here's another one, same, same concept, right? Again, he's just asking himself right here, do I got one of these? And he's probably got both sides. You know, I got both sides of it, do I like it, take it? You know, he, he will make a me-me call to that back on some of these deals. He knows he's going to throw it just so the back kind of stays out of his way. Uh, he'll just say, hey, he, right now he's probably saying, hey, me, 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 me. I know I'm taking this free access throw. You know, just stay out of my way, right? Don't, don't let me hit you with a backswing. Stay out of the way. You know, fit in there. I'm taking the free access. But that, that's one of the ways I think we simplify this, this read for him is just is making it a simple yes or no thought. And we have that a lot built in throughout. Maybe it's just one part of a, a concept or whatnot, but this is, this is it. Hear it again. Okay, so he's coming up inside zone, you know, different variation, different formation, same concept for the QB. Here he's saying, you know what, I got a threat of cloud, discrepancy between the corner and the safety on this side, both sides really. You know, I do like the numbers in my box. You know, but there's a threat of cloud. No, I'm not sure. I tell him, you, you take that throw, you better, you better throw a completion. So he works the hand there, right? These guys are just running the routes. You know, Jamar does a little, not necessarily how you would draw the run play up to be executed, but it worked out. Guy's a hell of a player. Was the freshman of the year in the conference this year. True freshman. 
this is the same thing, Texas. So Texas was hitches for us. We're in wide splits here. And this is just really easy to tag on any, some of the, you know, any, any really run concept that you want to do. But I do think the wide splits are a good change up. You know, we got these guys, man, shoot, he's out here splitting the top of the numbers and the hash out there. Uh, he's eliminated this side based on the press and, and the possibility of potential of a cloud of the safety plan high. He's really just kind of keying this overhang backer here. And again, this is a yes or no thing. Can I take one of my hitches free access? I'm going to throw it. If not, I'm working the, I'm working the run game. So right here, he's kind of feeling this out. I've got probably both of those. He likes the, you know, we throw this one most of the time because it's a shorter throw. But you can see Jack. Uh, he's from Camas, right up the road here. Good decision. Here's the same same concept. Inside zone from a wide split. This time the, the you know the nickel or the overhang guy, you know we call him the apex player out there, stays out in the throwing lane. You know he's got good numbers here. He's just saying right now, no, you know I don't I don't got an easy throw. I got a good looking box. Let's go. Let's hand this thing off. But we simplified that read for him. I tell them, yeah, you know, these, these, are, these are converting to fades down here. And, and I tell them, if you know, if you're rolling really good, you know, go ahead and you like your matchup, you could take one. But here I think it was second down and three or something like that. that you know what, just be smart and work the handoff. So these guys kind of understand the situation there. These are some of our kind of basic thoughts, but I wanted to show you that, that yes, no, and how we simplify that for them. Uh, coverage read, okay, so this is a different type of read. Okay, so this is just an example, you know, I'm not necessarily talking about the specific concept, I'm more talking about how we teach it. So a coverage read here, okay, uh, it's just one high or two high, you know, and I will get more specific with the quarterback the more experienced he is. Okay, so if I've got a second or third year guy that I've been around and he really understands it, I might say, okay, hey, we're getting, we're expecting quarters over here, you know, we really want to take this thing. You know, we'll get a little bit more specific into the coverages, and I think they can kind of anticipate where they're going to go a little bit quicker. Uh, to a first-year guy, you know, or a first-year in the system, sometimes it's as simple as just, hey, two high, one high, and I build some different concepts for them. You know, I'm expecting two different coverages. Here we go. Here's my two high beater. You know, this is obviously a pin, a post-end concept we love versus a quarters look. And then here's a one high, and we change this up, you know, depending on the look that we thought we were going to get. This just happened to be the one that we had this game. It's the inside receiver just kind of creating a little bit of a pick on that corner, you know, a little bit of a rub. He's kind of setting up and coming underneath. We're trying to kind of hit that thing right there. Uh, but he's just coming up pre-snap. I've just got to see how many safeties there are, and that's telling me where my read is. If he chooses this side, it's a high-low read, one, two, three. If he chooses over here, he's pretty much on the, on the alley. Okay, so here we go. So this would be Z in. Okay, here we get rotation. You know, they move to a single high safety defense. QB sees it, he's working the alley concept, you know. So we end up kind of creating a little bit of rub. It's a terrible target. We should get a little bit more out of this. Um, I always tell those quarterbacks, man, our, our target or our ball placement, you know, uh, dictates the yak, that, you know, yards after catch. So we, you know, we throw, we throw a better ball on this thing, hit him running, I think we're able, you know, we're having a chance to be able to get up into here, and, and you never know what happens. But we throw it too low, the guy's got a slide. It's an eight-yard gain, you know. But uh, a good read by the Q. Okay, same concept in the same game. Uh, here are the safety, you know, now we've got a too high safety look, right? So we got a too high safety look. He feels like the, you know, the safety plays, you know, pretty, pretty firm and flat-footed on the, on the basic cross, and he's got a chance to take the post over the top. And again, we'll, we'll try to build that, okay? These are the two coverages that we're, trying to, that we're trying to defeat. You know, this is what my quarterback is really comfortable throwing, and then we can kind of put two, two different, combina you know, different combinations per week on there. You know, and some of these carry over week to week, you know, on there. This is a pretty standard one that we'll, that we'll have, but, um, you know, maybe it's a cover two. You've got a cover two beater, and then there's your cover three beater on this side. And he's just got to come up, see what the coverage is, and now I can know exactly where I'm going with the ball. I think that's an easy way to classify and teach that guy. Okay, here's another example. Okay, ZN, another ZN. I think we have another one where we're running from 12 personnel on here, kind of a, uh, a wing slot formation. Uh, but we're running like a pipe, another two high type beater, right? Y is going to push up, get on the safety's toes, take him out of there. Um, the Z is going to push up. Kind of let him win the race is what we say. Let him win the race and then working off underneath uh, into this area here. 
Um, but this would be, again, one high, two high. Two high safeties, we're working this side, the pipe down to the, down to the back. You know, we got the back going to the weak side to influence the mic backer and try to create a little bit of a window here. Uh, and then this is our one high beater, which is our Reno concept. Inside fade by the slot, you know, hitch if they're off, if they're tight, we're gonna run it under on the outside. So that's just, you know, hey, single high answer, two high answer, just another example of this concept. So here we go. Okay, he's just looking up here, what do I got? Okay, you know, these guys are a big quarters team, I got my quarters look, too high, I'm piped to the back right now. Piped to the back, that's what he knows. Here we go, safety turns his hips, okay. Backs work into the field to influence the mic to create ourselves a window, and there's the throw. Right in there, and you kind of, you can see it, eh, I don't got an end zone on that one. I got some drills to show, so I wanted to cut some of this down. So here we go again, ZN. Okay, got my pipe concept over here. Okay, got my, my Vegas, con or my Reno concept over here. Here we go. His job is get on this safety, take him out of there. Okay, Z, let him win the race, and rub right up underneath there. We give this guy, he gave him a hard time on this one. Kind of got locked up there, you know. <laughs> But uh, it shows a good example. He's a heck of a player, man. I, I like Isaiah a lot. Okay, here we go again. Same type of concept. I think, uh, here we go. Now moves, we're playing Colorado, right? They're, they're trying to show you a two high, and bang, it comes down to a single high answer. Okay, I'm working my man side. Here we go. And then, you know, this game may have been a little bit different concept, but here we go. He knows he's ripping that thing. We had like a slant corner working there. But... He feels that, but it's all determined pre-snap on where he's going, and I think that's just a really simple way. We don't do our whole pass game that way, obviously, but there's some reads that I think you can simplify, and it makes it really easy for your QB to where, you know, they, they might show you a bunch of different coverages or different look than you've anticipated, and he knows his general rules. You know, he can really work through and find his right read. Okay, this would be progression-based, okay? So this is, uh, this is our spacing concept, which, again, um, this is really a huge part of our quick game. Okay? So much of the run pass option stuff is, is quick game now. You know, that, that we really wanted with our, when we're actually throwing quick game, you know, we like this because it's a full field read and it's just strictly progression based. He doesn't have to know coverage. He doesn't have to know any of it. I mean, he's got to know right here. I'm working an isolation side. Take it if they give it to me. We'll change up the routes over there. We'll actually let him signal it sometimes as we get going. And then I'm coming back to my spacing if I don't like it. And spacing is really a better too high zone answer. But I basically my spacing is I got a man sitting over the ball at six. Okay, he's going to be kind of on the short curl here, seven to eight yards, about a yard outside the tight end. The back will be on a check wide, working that little triangle over here if we don't like it. But the QB is coming up. I got quick game over here. If I don't like it, I get a coverage I don't anticipate. I'm coming back to my zone beater, which is the spacing. And I love it because it gives you outs. I think so much the old school quick game was like I've got my, you know, fade quick out over here. I've got my hitches or whatever, you know, over here. Um, and, you know, it's a pick a side deal. So if I pick the side and the coverage changes post snap or whatnot, or they give me a coverage I didn't anticipate, you know, I don't want my guy coming back over here and reading this thing. This way it allows them to work something over here that we like, usually a man type beater. If I don't like it, I can kind of reset my feet tight and come back and throw my spacing. So I just love it because it gives the QB answers. And that's, that's a big part of what we want to do in our pass game. And this is pretty much all our, you'll see in this thing, we'll build spacing across all our personnel groups and we'll give the, quarter, uh, the, the, the defense a bunch of different looks. And our whole, with the, with, the, uh, with the intention being, keep it simple for us, simple read, it's the same read for our quarterback over and over and over, he's rep spacing a billion times. Right, except we're gonna give a bunch of different looks for the defense, whether it be by formation, personnel, shift in motion, whatever it may be, it's the same read for us. More, looks like a hell of a lot more than it is than it really is to the defense. So here it is, he's got some hitches working up top. I'm gonna to take him if I got him, if not, I'm coming back to my spacing. That's the general piece of it. But this is a progression-based, is what I'm trying to get, is how we teach him, progression-based read. One, basically up here to these guys, two, three, four, back to my spacing. So he's got the free access, rip it. Okay, here it is, same set. Here's against ASU. Okay, I think we had like a double slant type concept over here, a lion, all right? And so right now he's thinking, okay, man, I got this thing. 
my apex backward zone. He's tucked in here. I've got free access. I'm going to rip this thing out here. Post snap, picture changes on him, right? And so sometimes with quick game, it's like, oh shit, now I got to run, or I got to check it down to my back, maybe over the ball. Okay, that's why we like to build in this thing on the back side to give the quarterback answers, right? So he comes out thinking, I'm going to take it. Oh, nope, that would have been picked, right? He might have been able to work back here. I think it surprised him a little bit. You know, his inside guy, but he ends up coming back. There's his tight end over the ball. And you get a seven-yard gain right there. You can really see it from the end zone here. Don't like it, reset tight. And the target is what I don't like here. I'd really like him. We can see where this guy is. I'd love this ball to be thrown right on this shoulder right here. Tell the tight end which way to turn. Turn him this way. That could be a 10-yard gain instead of a six, seven-yard gain. Poor target. Okay, here it is. Now we're in a three by one set. So we were two by two last play, three by one. Same read. Take my isolation, whatever the route may be. Okay, in this case, I think it's a hitch. Okay, he felt a little bit threatened by the safety rolling down, so he got off the hitch. Okay, works back to his spacing. In his spacing, he knows he's going to have this triangle always covered. Right, he's kind of a clear out. So you can see him. He's looking up here, doesn't like it. Resets, two, three, gets to his third read right there. Give yourself an outlet. Okay, here it is again. So now we rotate, now I'm giving them the same look from a four by one. Right, we motion out to empty. Again, it's spacing, the protection has changed a little bit, yes. We put a slant up top. Okay, but the same read. I'm gonna take my isolation, back to my spacing, change up the look for the defense, same progression for the quarterback. Doesn't like it, backer drops out, two, three. Good, good read there by Jack. Okay, now it is three by two empty. Again, same spacing concept. Now we've got a double slants up here to the field. Okay, spacing down to the boundary. Progression-based read. I'm ripping it right there. Yeah, I like it. If not, I could come back down two, three, four. So you guys get the point. I just wanted to show it from a couple different, couple different looks. Okay, working through this here. Fundamentals, uh, okay, how can, sorry. Okay, how can you tell you're being effective, okay? I'm constantly asking those guys questions during the meeting. I feel like it keeps them on their toes, it's like you're teaching a class. You know, you're always asking these guys questions. You know, whether it's like, what's your drop here? What's the coverage here? What are you thinking on this one? They're just constantly asking, and, and, and I think you tend to always ask the starter, you know? I try to involve all those guys in there, constantly asking them questions, you know, and, and, and making them, you know, explain it. They can get, they can explain it quickly, exactly what you want to hear. And then quizzing them, you know. And, and I'll, I'll go back down here. If the student hasn't learned, the teacher hasn't taught, quizzing them. If you're not getting the results that you want, you know, you, you're quizzing them and they're not giving you the answer that you want, I think you've really got to look at what, what, what can I do to teach this thing better, you know, if you're not getting. So I think that's, 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 a, that's a good deal, um, you know, to do every now and then. Okay, uh, can get on the board and teach it back to you. So I think we'll, we'll do that, you know, hey, jump up on the board, teach us this concept. And I think the guys, when they really get it, they can get up on the board and they can pretty much run your meeting by the time that they, you know, they've gone, they've been with you for, for a little, you know, spend some time with you. But that's, that's ultimately what you're, what you're looking for. Uh, and then it shows up on tape, you know. Um, you know, and it brings validity to your drills and I, I try to point it out as, as many chances as I can. Hey, this, this is wave drill. This is a rip through right here. You guys can see it. This is why we do it. This, this is a great example of it and make a big deal out of that uh, when it does show up on tape. Uh, drill work, okay? So I'm gonna get to showing a couple drills here. Um, okay, so the, the QB drills, I, I do think it, you're training your body. It's, it's about creating muscle memory. And, and, and this, is, this is how I feel like these things should be. We should practice fast and smooth with our quarterback drills. I mean, it's not, this isn't, I mean, we're going game speed. This thing is fast, fast, but smooth. I want you guys, I want you working full speed, but I, won't, I don't want you super tense. I think when guys hear like fast, they kind of tend, you know, like they're finishing a 40 and they tense up. We'll, we'll tell them, you know, I'm all constantly on those guys about being smooth with the way that they, with the way that they drop or the way that they play. Um, and, then, and then I do, I do think that this is, this is, this is true. Great practice habits mean great performance, you know? And so we're constantly trying to reiterate that to our players. Man, you gotta create some great practice habits out here with the way that you're doing the little things every day. And that's what I kinda go back to that philosophy. The little things, doing them right, the right way, over and over and over, over time, right? 
are going are to get you the results that you want on game day. So be a great practice player. It'll show up on game day. Uh, I promise you. Uh, drills should reflect situations that come up in games. And this is another lesson I really kind of learned when I was a young coach. I was like, yeah, these are the kind of the quarterback drills that I grew up doing. And some of them, you know, I couldn't necessarily tell you, like, you know, they didn't always translate to the field. So I, I really, I really feel, feel like this is like, okay, what, what are the different situations that come up throughout the game? And then those are the drills that I'm, those are the drills that I'm doing. So you should be able to show a lot of examples of your drills showing up on tape, you know? And if they're not, then I think you need to kind of reevaluate re your drills. But I like to show them as much as I can. Man, this is this drill right here. Uh, and then eyes and feet. All, all these drills, these quarterback drills, I mean, that's what we're trying to train with the Q. Always train in your eyes and his, and his, and his feet. Uh, all, all, all drills are centered around those two things. Um, a, a drill, drill checklist. So I have a checklist, to, like we're starting Spring Ball Tuesday. I've got a checklist. These are the drills that I want to hit. And, and, uh, and then I have like the calendar kind of built in there and I'll just check them off. I hit this drill this day, I hit this drill this day, just to make sure that I hit all the drills that I want to hit. Um, and I do feel like as you get into, you know, training camp or, or whatnot, you're writing down a list of the mistakes, the things that we need to, that you need to work on. Like, I'm watching the game and last year, you know, our backup quarterback, Connor Blount, he had the worst ball security. I mean, he... So we were constantly, how can I build a drill? Or how can I incorporate this ball security drill to get him to keep two hands on the football in the pocket? Because he's going to kill us with turnovers. But, but making a little checklist, okay, these are the drills that I need after the end of the game. These are the mistakes that we made. These are the things that I need. These are the drills that I need to, you know, work this next week to improve that. Um, I think so, so many times you're getting caught up in the scheme of it all. Like, oh, this is the scheme, scheme. What are we going to do to, you know, teach the scheme? That you're like, okay, what mistakes, like, fundamental mistakes that we make the previous week that I need to clean up. Uh, and then team reps. I'm a huge believer in this. And, and Coach McIntyre at, at Colorado really, um, you know, when we were at San Jose State in Colorado, really got me to buy into this. We were, we were two fields, and we've done it a little bit at Oregon State. We were two fields during fall camp, two fields a team, rolling. Young guys on one field, older guys on the other field. When we were doing team, and we were getting reps. And I love it for the QB because I think it's so hard to simulate that confined space being in the pocket with people around you. You know, it's, it's so hard to simulate that with drills, um, making throws, sliding in the pocket, doing things when people are running at you. I think that's so tough to, to, to do. I just, I feel like guys learn by doing it. And, and team reps, I just, I'm a, as much team as we can get, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always in, in favor of. Uh, okay, so this drill, um, I thought I had a, sorry here. I just talked about being dialed in on your video. Yeah, I'm missing that one. Um, I, I do think, and I, and I, and I wanted to add a slide, but I remember kind of what I was, what I was trying to get out is, is the first thing I think that you tell the quarterbacks always is you got to take care of the football, right? You can't take care of the football, you can't play. It's the number one stat to dictate wins. And, and uh, when we be meeting with the offense Tuesday morning or, you know, Monday morning, that's one of the, the graphs that I'm going to show them. You know, our guys put together a chart of like, okay, this is how many times us in this room as an offense, right, turn the ball over, okay? And this is where it puts us, right, in the conference. You know, so last year I think we were kind of somewhere in the middle. I think we had 18 turnovers, right? Um, and I think, you know, some of the teams, you show them, okay, hey, Washington won the league, right? And this is how many they had, right? They had 10. They gave it away 10 times. And you can show them, you know, and it, it usually adds up. I mean, I mean, it's the number one stat. And so I think that's a huge thing um, to keep harping on with those um, with those quarterbacks is, is ball security. And this is one of the drills that we'll hit. Uh, we'll, we'll hit something of ball security. I mean, we're, we're constantly harping on that. Um, we'll do a ball security circuit just about every day. Okay, so this is, a, this is a rip through drill. You can see Aiden, I'll put a net, I'll, I'll change up the finish on this thing. This was just, we move the net out here. Sometimes we're throwing to a guy. We'll move the net around. But basically, you know, he's playing with a good base here. He's got two hands on the ball. And he's just kind of shuffling up and through, and then he's, 
as he goes through the bags here, they're pretty tight together, as you can see. As he goes through the bags, he's ripping it through. When I say I rip it through, and I want it ripped through tight, you know. Um, you know, it's almost, it's not even really shoulder to shoulder. It's more inside. It's like peck to peck right there. I mean, it's just a nice tight rip close to your body with two hands. So it's simulating. I'm stepping up in the pocket, right, but I'm ripping that thing tight and through, a little quick tight rip as I go right, right through it for somebody that's maybe ripping a defensive lineman that's trying to knock the ball out. So you can see every time he's shuffling through, he's like, I'm, I'm shuffling up in the pocket, ripping it through, okay? Just keeping a base, working a base, working a base here. Shuffle up, rip it through, okay? And then I can give him a ball command at any time. So he's ripping it through, and I think I go, I kind of give it to him right here. I'm saying ball right now, okay? And they, they always finish going through. So if I say ball, he's got to rip it through and then finish with the throw. So you can see him here. Rip it through and finish. So that's kind of the drill here. You can see it a little bit better. Again, Aiden's playing with a good base. I do have him reach with his back foot. You know, first here as he's sliding through, but he rips it through there. Shuffling, just working a shuffle. He's not working a drop. He's just working kind of keeping a good base, playing with good posture. Two hands on the football, relaxed upper body. Eyes downfield, I think, is huge. You may need to have a guy holding numbers up, you know, down over here to make sure that he keeps his eyes up. Okay, he's going, and then I'm going to say right here, ball. And then he's going to finish, rip it through, finish the throw. This one shows up all the time. You know, I love to show this thing. You can see Connor, he didn't really play with a great base. You know, but it was good that he had, you know, two hands on it there. Okay, so here, here's just, you know, here's an example of this one here. Okay. You can see Jake. You know, there's a bunch I could have pulled from this. You can see him as he goes through here, right through, rip it through as he steps up through the line. Now, he doesn't rip it through and hit it, you know, but he rips it through, and that, that's, that's the technique that I'm really trying to get is making sure that we're keeping two hands on it in traffic, and I like that movement, being aggressive with it as you step through. Uh, here it is again. You can just see that little movement right there, I think, is big time right there. Rip, step, rip it through. He kind of works a little escape drill there, but you can see it a little bit better from here. Again, two hands on the ball, rip it through tight right there. That little, that little rip right there from that guy's you know, arm out reaching that ball. You see that ball come out so many times from someone that steps up, and they do. They, they get a little bit of separation. Um, okay, posture. Okay, or you heard me say base. That's, that's our buzzword on this thing. You know, and, and I think this is huge. One of the best guys I love to show is Drew Brees. I think he plays with an, with an awesome core. Um, I, I tell him, I, I, I do, I think a six foot two guy should play six foot. You know, I don't think you should be standing real tall in the pocket. I think that's an old um, coaching point that I'm not in, in favor of. I like the guys to play with a good, a, a good solid base with balance, um, a little bit more of their weight on the backside. Uh, so I say a six foot two guy should play six foot. The guy that I had at Colorado, Steven Montez, was the worst at that. He wanted to stand tall, straight legged in the pocket, and then before he would throw, now he would like load himself, and he was just wasting time. Um, so base is something that we're constantly talking about. I say do everything you can not to rely on your arm. You know, and so that's what I'm talking about. Putting yourself in a great balanced position to make an accurate throw. Usually when it's an inaccurate throw. It has something to do with your lower body. Um, I say the footwork affects everything. It does. Uh, and then I say the example is really throwing a punch. If you're going to throw a punch, right, you're not standing there like flat-footed, right? You're not going to get any power. When you're going to load, I mean, you're going to throw a punch, right? You're really loading your core, loading your body up so you can kind of get through and use your, use your core, use your whole body on that. So I, I do, I kind of refer to that, um, that throwing motion really very similar in my mind to throwing a, throwing a punch. Okay, so this is a bags drill. This is something that we work on pretty much every day. Um, and, and Jake's probably going through a little bit fast. Okay, this is not a, we're working on posture and base here. See how his feet are apart? This is good, man. I, this is good balance, but he's going through a little bit too quick. I'm, I'm telling the guys, it's not how fast you can get through the bags. This, that's not the drill. Okay, because these guys will get through and they'll just want to, I, I do, you know, work in quarterback camp, and these guys will just want to race through the bags and get through as fast as you can. It's like, it's not a race. I'm working on posture. This should be nice and slow. 
just nice and slow, just making sure that my feet are separate right here, playing with a good core. Two hands on the ball, sometimes I'll come over here, check their ball security as they're going through, but they're just shuffling through. As they come back, I'll have them back leg, reach with their back foot, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And then I, I've got two cones out here. I've got a near cone and a far cone. You can't really see it here. Uh, so as they get towards the end here, you know, we'll go, and I'll just say near or far. So right here I'm saying, hey, near. He's going to turn, get there, and then we'll change up the location of the net. Sometimes it may be over here, wherever, you know, however you're finished that you want to be. Sometimes they may go around the cone and throw it on the move, but I'm making them, okay, i got to think a little bit, you know, i got to adjust, so I'm working, I'm combining a couple things. I'm really working kind of an escape drill here, set up, got to set my feet and make a good throw. I do have them bounce through. Um, I do, I think it just, it's a little bit of, you know, just through, just kind of get some going at the beginning of practice. They get their knees out, whatever, they're running through the bags. It's a little bit of a conditioner for them, gets their, just gets their heart rate up before practice. I do like that. And then we're into the, then we're in there. And again, the, the, the key coaching points, good bend, feet are apart, not too wide, you know, but the feet are apart. They're sitting in there with a good base. But the, the guys will want to get their feet together. And you can kind of see Connor, he wasn't real good at this. This is something we really worked on him. <coughs> you can see his feet get together. See how they're really, they're getting too close together here. I just, I feel like you could just push him over. The wind might blow him over sometimes on that, that, that thing. I mean, he's so, he's so narrow, you know, with, with what he's doing is that this is something I think we was early in fall camp that we really had to work on with him. Then I said near again. Hey, near, get there, set your feet, make the throw. Through the bags. Okay. Uh, box drill. This is another base one. Okay, so he's always sitting in the middle. That's where he's, that's where his kind of home is there. And these, these things are, you can see about four yards. You know, it's like a four yard box there. Uh, but, but he's going to sit in the middle. That's where he wants to be. Again, he's sitting with a good base, like he's in the pocket. And then I'm just pointing to different cones. And he's going to kind of angle his body. And again, he's just working shuffling. He's just working, keeping his core, keeping his feet apart. Just working, working a nice solid base as he moves through the pocket and then adjusting his passing profile to play. You know, I'm, now I'm reading this side of the field. Now I'm reading over here this side of the field, but always working back to the middle just based on my points, and then I'll give him a direction to throw. Okay, wave drill. Uh, when I do this wave drill, and this is working pocket movement, and I love this. I think this is it's an old drill, but I, I've got a couple wrinkles on it. One of the things that I like to do, I think that is different from some other people, is I like to be down the field. What I do, because I feel like their eyes, uh, their eyes should be downfield. I, I used to stand like right here, or I used to be on a knee or something like this, and I'd be giving the directions, and I was like, well, what the heck am I doing? You know, I don't want them looking right at the line. So I try to, when I do this wave drill, I try to get myself downfield where that's where I want their eyes to be. Um, this drill, I've got two guys out here, and so they're going to take a three-step with a hitch drop and get ready. They're in their good, good base right there, and I'm going to move them. So when we do this wave drill, he's just taking small steps. You know, I'm going to move him, I'm moving him this direction. Look at his moves. I push him up. Whenever I push him back, he's dropping. See how he drops? It's like, a, it's like a reloaded rep. Now I'm dropping. I'll just keep dropping until I give him another direction. There it is. I'm moving him. Now whenever I push him up or pull him up, he's going to shuffle with a base. Shuffling up, shuffling up. Okay. Whenever I push him back, he'll drop. So you see how he drops there? I push him back. He keeps dropping. Here, okay, up, 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 push him back. Good, we're just working two hands, keeping our passing profile, our shoulders, right? Should stay perpendicular to the line of scrimmage there. And then when I clap, he's going to reset and he's going to throw here, he's going to throw here, depending on where I point. I think this is a, just a, a classic drill, but you can see Tristan, he's a, a new guy that we got, that had to sit out this year, but he'll be a sophomore and he'll be competing for it. But you can see him dropping back. Nice two hands on the ball, his eyes are downfield, so here I am, like 20 yards downfield. Shuffle up, I'll point this direction, set your feet, get it out. Okay, here it is showing, showing up in the game. Right here, oh, move in that direction, reset, make the throw. So again, this is another one that I feel like brings validity to your drills. It shows up on tape. You know, and I love to show the guys when I'm watching the film with them. Hey, Jake, this is wave drill, man. This is why we're working this. 
You do a great job of keeping your eyes downfield. You slide in the pocket, you set your feet, and you make an accurate throw. Okay, wave drill. Same drill with an athletic finish. And I do like this one. Okay, so I, I want to put, we're not always able as quarterbacks to set our feet and make the throw. We'd like to be able to, uh, but we're not, able, we're not always able to. So this is where whatever direction that he's going when I clap and point, he's going to keep going that direction. So right here I was pushing him back and then I clapped for him to throw. He just keeps going back. And so this could be simulating maybe a hot throw. You know, they've got, they're bringing one more than we've got. I've got to get it off to a shallow or I've got to dump it off to my back, my outlet. You know, we're just simulating that right here and I tell him to get big on that throw. Get big, get it over the top of it. Okay, here's Tristan. He's moving. We're working just a normal same drill I would, but we're finishing it a little bit different way. Here he's sliding to his left. Can't reset. Maybe he's throwing to a screen, you know. Maybe he's throwing to a shallow that's coming from this thing and, he, and he's got to get himself a throwing lane. But it's a different finish to the same drill. And it kind of keeps it, you know. There he's going across in whatever direction. So I think this one, you know, this one shows up a ton too. I mean, so here it is just on a regular screen. You know, we're running a little tailback screen here. Okay, he's not able to set his feet, which on the screen he really shouldn't. You know, he's got to drift and he's got to make an athletic throw. And so we're trying to, we're trying to simulate that. Okay, here it is again. This is another screen. Again, just putting him in a weird situation. I wanted to show you a couple clips of where it, was. it wasn't a screen, but a lot of times it's a screen where he's got to drift and find a throwing lane. Personal foul here on the buffs. This was like third and 20. Bad deal for him. Kept the drive alive. Coach McIntyre probably wasn't very happy about that one. Uh, Brady drill. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the same thing. We're working pocket movement, we're, we're working one step instead of small steps. Okay, so the, the wave drill, you keep moving with small steps, whatever direction. Brady is one step, one step, one step. And I do, I think it's important, you know, the big coaching point on this is obviously is stepping with your back leg. So you can, you get your foot in the ground and you can make the throw. Two hands on the ball, just taking one step in whatever direction. So here I'm finishing a little bit different. I could finish this one with just, you know, here we go, move here, move here, and then when I clap, reset and throw. We could do that, but here I'm finishing it with an escape drill. So I'm telling him right here, get out this direction, or get out that direction where he's going to gain ground, two hands on the football, which I like right there. I think so many guys separate it right there, but that's great. Two hands on the ball, get out, attack your target, make an accurate throw. So you can see him again. One step, reach him with his back foot, that's pretty good. One step. One step, and then I've got him out on the, and there's a clip here. So this is my guy, Connor. He had problems with running around with one hand on the ball, right? So you can see, I, I, like, what could I do this week to help him with that? I'm going to go out here during this drill, a drill that we do all the time. I'm going to make sure he's got two hands on the ball. I'm going to knock it out with that bat that I got there. Okay, and here you can see it, just a one-step throw here, okay? He's got to slide the pocket. This is just one step, boom, set and throw. I don't need to see this. Okay, uh, spacing progression. So we talked about the spacing, and this is how I like to teach these progression reads. Okay, so we talked about our isolation over here, right, uh, is our first read, okay? Here was our second read, our short hook or whatever was our, was our third read, back to our four. So one, two, three, four, whatever your progression may be. I really like this drill. Um, I'm going to have him, he's the first read, so he's either going to give hands if he's open or X if he's closed. Okay? And so right here I'm coming out and I'm, just, I'm standing back here as the coach and I'm pointing, okay, I'm first read, whatever, you're up, you're up. I'm pointing at him. So Aiden's over here. He's going to flash his hands. Jake knows, okay, I'm open. And I'm just working, I'm working my drop, you know, working the timing of this read, make, of this read here. Here we go. I, I point to the second read, so the first read gives an X. I'm covered, right? I'm covered. I'm working back to the, to the third read, or the second read here. There you go. Now I point to three, X, X. He works back through. So whatever progression that you're working, I think that's an important, important deal. Here's a scramble drill. 
hey, now we'll do a scramble drill where we'll have the routes and the receivers will be working. Now, this should be really, it shouldn't be scramble drill, it should be really scramble move, okay? And this is something that we got from the Packers that I, I feel like has showed up on film quite a bit and, and we work quite a bit, okay? So we have our, our receivers out here, you know, sometimes they're a little bit wider, they're out towards the numbers, kind of like they're simulating maybe a curl or whatnot. Okay, here are the quarterbacks, three hitch, they're escaping, they're working an escape. So here we go, He's, Jack's working out here to the right, Jake's gonna reverse out, get depth, go to the left. This is the scramble move, right? So if he goes, he turns up field as he gets to the sideline, which is the typical rule, right? And most guys just keep going, right? And there's so many, we got sick and tired of throwing these long foul balls that the guy would wheel up the sideline, hey, I'm open, and we'd throw it out of bounds, right? And it'd be second and 10 or whatnot. Okay, so this scramble move I feel like is higher percentage. So we train them. If you're gonna take the sideline and go, you're gonna put your arm up and tell the QB that you're going. So you'll see these guys, you know, putting their arm up. If not, he's gonna, he's gonna go, he's gonna sell like he's going up, and then he's gonna attack on a little comeback back here to the sideline. And, and I, I do, I feel like this thing is so much high percentage that Shea Fields we had at, at Colorado caught, I don't know how many balls on this. He was really, really, had a really good feel had a really good feel for this. So you can see Colby, push up, burst, work back. I'd like him to be a little bit more downhill attacking the ball. Okay, so you can see him here. Hey, I'm putting my arm up. Here we go. And this, this is more of a, this is a drill for the QBs, I guess, and the receivers. We're getting on the, on the same page. But you can see Mikey, Jesuit High, Portland. Again, and I'd like for him to be a little bit more burst. He's a running back now a little bit more burst at the top of this. Sell it, get him running, get him turning, running, get that DB going, and then bang, I'm attacking back downhill towards the sideline. So here it is, and this was actually the tight end Noah, this clip that we pulled here. So Jake does a nice job again, just shuffling up, that's that rip through drill again right there. Rip through, whap, two hands on the football, escapes out, watch Noah, okay, that same location. Okay, here's the scramble to you. You're on the sideline. Most people are just going up the, up the field. No one will go up the field if he can beat him or he feels like he's open. But watch him. He pushes, bursts, gets him going, back to the sideline. And there's a seven-yard completion right there in overtime against the Buffs that helps us get to second and three, which is a, which is a big deal. Uh, step overs. Okay, and I got, got a couple more minutes here. Um, this is another pocket movement one. Sometimes I will just have the line. So you can see I've got like a, I do have a step over bag here, like a normal step over bag. Um, and then I've got, the, they make those, Gilman makes those small quarterback ones now that aren't very high off the ground. Um, so I do sometimes to emphasize that step, you know, I'll do it, but you don't really don't need a, a, that small bag. You could just be stepping over the line. So he's just in posture, I'm pointing, here we go, here we go, and I'm just pulling him up. Hey, here we go, shuffle up. And they shuffle up and around, keeping a good base back to their start. Shuffle up again, and I can say ball at any time. So it's just working different pocket movement. Pull them up. I can push him, push him, pull him up. And again, I can, I can, I can make a ball call right here. I can do whatever. I, I, can, I can call that at any time. But again, I think that works on stepping with your back foot, and it works on that shuffle as we, as we pull them up in the pocket. Okay, step up and decide. All right, this one is, he's gonna, we're working on, I've got two guys out here, 10 yards apart, you know, and, and this is really the line of scrimmage, this hash is the line of scrimmage here. So he takes three step and hitch, and you can see our manager snaps it and he kinda gets out of the way. Three step and hitch, I kinda clap, all right, there's the end of your drop, go. It's broken down and he's kind of attacking the line of scrimmage under control, it's not a sprint, he's attacking the line of scrimmage under control like it's broken down, I'm going to scramble, but I'm keeping my eyes down the field. And I think so many young quarterbacks, they make that decision up, one's not there, I'm going, and they put their eyes down and they miss some opportunities. Coverage goes to attack them, and now there's an opportunity for a huge play that they miss because their eyes go down. And this drill trains his eyes. I attack the line of scrimmage, okay, I'm looking to scramble, and then these guys, I'm gonna point to one of them before the, before the drill. See how he flashes it about, I tell him about three yards from the line of scrimmage, flashes his hands, okay. So here's the next guy, he takes three with a hitch, clap, attack, oh, shit. Clap, there we go, he attacks, okay, he flashes his hands, he makes the throw. Every now and then I'll do this, you know, no one raises a hand, 
No one's open. He's got to tuck it. Now he's got to get vertical and burst through. See if I can find one of those. So three with the hitch, attack the line of scrimmage. See, and I, I give him nobody. They just stand there, right? And now Jake's got, okay, no one's open. Tuck it and burst, right? Sometimes as we get later and when we get on grass, you know, uh, there's a little bit on turf sometimes not as good, but I'll work a slide drill into this, the, the, the end of this thing, to where I don't have this one on video, but Jake will go, he'll burst, and then these guys will both kind of attack him, all right? They'll both kind of attack him, and then he's got to go work covering the ball and hook sliding. So you kind of incorporate that into the drill as well. But I do, I do think this one is, is good for... Attack the line of scrimmage. Here's the hand right before the line of scrimmage. Keep your eyes downfield as you attack. Um, and then this will be the last one here. Uh, throwing mechanics. Okay, and, and I do, I'm not going to get too much into this, but I, I, I do think um, it's important not to overcoach that guy on his throwing mechanics. Okay, and, and uh, you know, it's just I think guys have so many reps, and everybody's throwing, everybody's throwing motion is going to be a little bit different. The big thing for me is that their elbow is above the shoulder. If their elbow on their release point is below the shoulder, then I think you've got issues. But everybody's going to throw it a little bit different. Uh, I just avoid overcoaching them on, on some of these throwing mechanics. I, I, I think you just, um, I, I, I like to coach them more on their balance and their, and their footwork. And, it, you know, I understand that college is a little bit different because those guys are kind of a little bit more ready-made for you. They've got so many reps invested, but, but uh, that, I'm a big belief in that. Um, and I do think it's all about creating leverage. Light arm, light grip. Don't squeeze that thing. You know, those guys, you see so many guys want to throw that deep ball, you know, the go route, and they, they go to throw it, and they squeeze the ball, and then you can tell that ball comes out wobbling on a duck. It's usually because they're holding that thing too tight. Uh, but I always tell them, hey, when you're throwing those deep throws, light grip, light arm. Light grip, loose grip, light arm. You know, let your core work for you and create some torque for you. Um, easy way, hard way. This, this, uh, this is something we do as kind of a warm-up drill. It's kind of, I probably should have shown this at the beginning, but I wanted to show a couple of those other drills. We do this as a warm-up drill. You can see Jake here. We just have him under control jog. Right? He's turning the easy way. It's a lot easier for Righty to turn this direction, but he's good. And I'm just going to say ball. Sometimes they can do it as they're throwing to their partner over here. We like to do it because we have like a competition going and how many guys, you know, how many you can hit, you know, throughout the course of fall camp. We keep track of it. Um, but the big deal here is he, when I say ball, is I want him to get his feet down. I want him to get his, get his feet down. Ball. Get your feet down. Get your foot in the ground. Let's make a throw. And then the big coaching point, and I like this camera view here, is he's got to be able to step just past the target, and I really should have him on the line. I don't to this day, but I really should have him on the line so you could check. That foot should be just past this line if the net's on the line, and he's dropping there so his hips can get through to the target. But you can see Jack here. This is good. Jack, Jack struggles at this, and you can see the accuracy of his throw. He's jogging. I say ball. You can see him step. He's stepping kind of across his body. He's not, he's not allowing his hips to get through. He's blocking himself. And you can see the result. He's kind of pulling down through it. He's not even close there. And he, Connor does a good job. He clears his hips. Steps just past the target, clear the hips, puts it in the, in the square there. This is the hard way throw. So now you've got you to turn the other way. I say ball, get your front shoulder around. That's the big thing. Get your front shoulder around, make an accurate throw, and you can see he blocks himself again. See that foot? Stops his hips, everything, pulling through with his arm, misses it. Okay, and then the last thing I'll show here is just quick foot ladder. I, I do like this. I realize your eyes are down a little bit. I tell the guys, sense the ladder in your peripheral, um, you know, if you can. But we're working all your different quick foot drills you guys all know, and then we just end with a finish. And we'll, we'll sometimes it'll be like right here, this is the beginning of practice. You're working your drill. You come out and you get a, you're working a throw on the move. Get your front shoulder, the, attack the target. Sometimes I'll put the net this way so he's got to run out of it, plant and throw or go around a cone. You can kind of get creative with how you want him to finish. But I just, you know, there's kind of your icky shuffle. I do te teach them base here. So this is, this is my favorite one right here. So he's like in his base and it's just a small, a small step forward. See how he's keeping that, that core, 
good posture. It's just a small step, working his feet, get my shoulder around, just combining a couple of drills. We're working our footwork. We're getting a throw on the move. You know, again, you know, he's working. This is skiing, we say, skiing back and forth, keeping that base as he goes through it, attack, and finish through. But um, I think I'm out of time here, but I, I, uh, I appreciate it. I wanted to show just a couple of those drills and, and give you a little insight. I know it's hard in just an hour, um, but a couple of the things that, that have been, you know, I've carried with me throughout the years and have been, have been uh, had success with. And I appreciate you guys, uh, appreciate you guys listening. Like I said, the spring ball, um, I'll put this, this spring ball dates are right, right here. And like I said, we'd, we'd love to, we'd love to have you uh, down to Corvallis to check out one of the spring practices um, or whatnot. Just, uh, just hit us up and we'll, we'll get you on the list. Um, we'd love to have you. And then I know we've got some camps uh, in the state. We'll have camps uh, it, on campus June 2nd and June 9th will be kind of our, our, uh, our high school uh, half-day camps uh, those, those mornings.